We are ending meteorological autumn on a rather chilly note and beginning winter 2023-24 on a similar note to 2022-23. Thanks for clicking on to the Global Weather and Climate Report edition 69. As you can see here, the Arctic Oscillation is tanking to the most negative it has been for many months indeed, and the North Atlantic Oscillation is also tanking firmly negative also. What implications is that going to have on the UK and Ireland weather as we move towards the final days of autumn, early days of winter? That still remains to be seen. We still have milder air flirting with us through the course of today, early portion of the upcoming work week, and then it looks as if we will very quickly turn cold once again with northeasterly winds fighting against milder air trying to move in from a southwesterly direction and it's all about context perspective let's remember back to december 2022 where we did have a, a very cold spell it was the coldest december since 2010 we had maximums at braemar of minus nine with minimums of minus 17 many days in the midlands minus two to minus three even minus five celsius locally overnight temperatures in the double digits below freezing so we have to remember where we've been before with regards to this upcoming cold spell and i'm still not entirely buying into the fact that this is going to be an exceptional spell of cold weather because we've been here so many times before so it's keeping a lid on hype and looking at perspective now this is off the gfs um operational it is the latest run so far today, and you can see the battleground between mild moving in from a west to southwesterly direction here, colder locked up over Scandinavia, northwestern Russia. What's going to happen is high pressure is going to back towards Greenland. That is going to allow the core of coldest air within this region of the northern hemisphere anyway, because remember, we have turned very cold in the main industrial centers of North America, East Asia. And Europe also here something you don't always see and it's very interesting because I've made mention of this in recent times about repeating patterns negative North Atlantic oscillation uh, to an, a lesser extent the negative Arctic oscillation seen back in July and August we've seen very wet conditions with cool conditions as well but we had a sea a world of warmth and what's more stand out about this current spell is the massive turnaround in the middle latitude pattern across the northern hemisphere because we've had such record breaking warmth uh, almost planet wide yes we've got some areas of cool and average across the world but generally speaking it has been dominated by record breaking warmth not just for weeks but months and really the, the majority of this year so far has been dominated by heat so really, what is going on, especially when the polar stratosphere is at record-breaking levels here? Speaking of the polar stratosphere, this is the uh, polar vortex here at the moment. You can see here a little bit of warming taking place over East Siberia here. We've got uh, a little bit of displacement off the pole of the polar vortex. Now, things actually get stronger before they get weaker. If we play through this loop, uh, keep in mind here that these purple colors, these darker purples, are the core of the polar vortex, so the coldest center point of the vortex itself. As we play through the loop, if you pay attention to the number here at the bottom left hand corner of this chart, that is the core of coldest conditions. And notice here that as we play through the loop, the temperature actually cools as we see that warming take place. Look at how the, the purples darken representing a stronger polar vortex winds circling around it is at near record breaking uh, levels so the mean zonal wind is blowing very strong indeed now as we see the warming take place over siberia you're then pushing the core of the polar vortex off the axis off the pole and towards the area between greenland and northern uh, portions of north uh, russia here what that's going to do is, I think, later down the road, folks, with the Mandrillon Oscillation progressing towards the maritime continent, 
we are going to eventually see a change in the pattern and the Atlantic will return once again to the western portions of Europe here. But watch this space. As we play through this loop, the core of that uh, coal is sinking towards our side of the pole. Notice here that the, the PV itself actually warms, but it then cools once again. Look at the strong warming over eastern Siberia here, but watch the, the number at the bottom left-hand corner of the screen here. The temperature, according to the GFS, while it's flexing back and forward between low minus 80s and high minus 80s, it actually touches minus 90 Fahrenheit, or Celsius, should I say. That is close to record-breaking warm. But look at the overall synoptic chart. We've got very strong warming taking place here, Siberia towards North America here. That, in turn, I think reflects more polar intrusions into North America. But, of course, when you've got the core of coal disturbed, you increase the chance of seeing polar stratospheric clouds, for example, and then also um interesting uh, jet stream strong jet stream coming in off the atlantic and into the uk and ireland here so there's a lot of dynamics taking place between the troposphere and the stratosphere big changes taking place within the stratosphere what influences later down the road will that have on the 500 millibar and and surface pattern that is going to be crucial as we go forward now notice that if we play if we look at the, the ECMWF, this is the weekly mean anomalies here at 10 HPA, so the very top of the stratosphere. You can see here week one, that warming seen like the GFS over eastern portions of Siberia. Week two, bang, we've got a strong warming. Week three, we've got a further strong warming pushing now towards the region Hudson Bay across to Greenland here. Does this eventually reflect in the 500 millibar pattern? Do we see a stronger a negative North Atlantic oscillation? At the moment, it's going into the tank. We're only now reaching neutral, but it is going to sharply drop almost between uh, minus one, minus two sigma below average here, below the neutral line. What that's going to do is it's going to pull the ridge to the west and open the core of coldest air over, over Europe westwards towards the uk and ireland that then doesn't necessarily shut down the atlantic but we have areas of low pressure some coming in from a northwesterly direction some coming in from a south to southwesterly direction that increases the chance of snow cover and snowfall here so let's have a look and see what the gfs is indicating here i know this is the global weather report but this is a big story here folks notice area of low pressure near the dutch coast uh, I know it's a little bit difficult to see, but this is, of course, with the backdrop of the 850 temperatures or 5,000 feet above our surface. Notice here, as we go forward, with that high towards the northwest, there's the core of cold air stir centered over Norway and Sweden here. And what you've got is areas of multiple low pressure, one to the west, one to the south, another over southern Europe here. This is going to bring some very messy conditions across parts of the Alps, Central Europe, but it's pulling this low over Western Russia, the one over the Balkans, northern Italy, another uh, to the west of Iberia, another to the left uh, out over the Atlantic. So it's a very busy pattern, but the position and track of these lows are going to allow this tug of war between mild coming in, trying to pull into the UK, into that cold air. And of course, when you introduce mild Atlantic air with cold air from the continent, you increase the chance of snowfall but it's going to be very marginal especially at low levels with regards to snowfall here but you notice that uh, the, the core of coldest air kind of pulls back it's that flex it's pushing that the, they're trying to resist that warmth uh, or cold should i say then we have this uh, colder air coming into the pattern once again and then uh, it's all off to the races once again. You can see the, the complexity of this pattern here, and it's going to be marginal, like I say. Now, this is the ECMWF. I'm going back and forward between GFS and ECMWF. But you notice here that as we play through this loop, look at the increase in snowfall, especially across eastern areas of the UK. As that northwest northeasterly wind comes in, you're really laying down the snow cover here. This general area towards Inverness looks as if it's going to get a, a paste in. We've also got the borders uh, down into uh, Northumberland, um, down the spine of the Pennines, for example, higher ground of Murray, Aberdeenshire. Notice we've got very little in the west of Scotland, England, 
Wales, Northern Ireland, and Ireland as well. Eastern counties of Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland also potentially seeing snowfall. Western areas is not going to get it. And this general theme represents a northeast or easterly airflow here. And it's all thanks to that block over the North, uh, North uh, Atlantic and Greenland here. So very interesting times to come, both in the stratosphere, both at the surface. Let's watch this space and see what happens this upcoming work week and beyond that. Since it's the global weather report, let's look globally. And this is the current uh, CDAS 0.5 temperature anomaly around the world at the moment here. Arguably, maybe not quite as strong in terms of the warmth versus October. This is going back to the month of October. You can see here the amount of warmth stacked up around the planet at the moment. This is the month of November. I suppose you could really be saying you're splitting hers with that. Uh, same areas that are below average compared to October. Central Africa up towards Scandinavia. Very cold November here, actually. Southwestern China, Mongolia, southern fringes of Russia. But, of course, we've got uh, dominated by uh, Central Asia, Northern Asian warmth. Australia on the whole warmer than average. North America on the whole warmer than average. Look at the warmth over Greenland, far northern portions of Canada, Alaska, South America, of course, possibly seeing an all time record in Brazil. Argentina on the whole has been colder than average, which is interesting here. Looking specifically at Europe, you can see here that we have a largely warmer than average continent, but with the exceptions of two main areas northern britain so scotland has seen a cold and average in november interestingly enough and that looks as if it's going to continue with the current setup this upcoming week norway sweden finland in the parts of northwestern russia below average the rest of europe is warmer than average let's have a look at north america and you can see here that we've got a cold and average quebec um labrador newfoundland northeastern united states below average but the majority of the u.s with the exceptions of South Texas, parts of Washington state is colder than average here. Let's have a look at South America. And you can see here a, a strong uh, area of warmth across the majority of Northern S South America, fair enough. But uh, the core of that warmth over Central and Southern Brazil, which is quite interesting, very cool compared to average across Argentina. Let's have a look at our friends down in, in Oz here. We've got areas of northern and eastern Australia, coastal areas, interesting enough, below average, and also across parts of a uh, southeastern western Australia is uh, seeing cold and average conditions for the month of November here. Let's have a look over to Asia, and you can see that we've got very cold conditions across southwestern China, parts of uh, the majority, in fact, of Mongolia. Uh, southern fringes of uh, Russia has been below average. We've seen a tremendous cold shot in the northern northern China, parts of uh, Japan, the Koreas. In recent times, we've had a wave of Siberian air empty out of Siberia, crossing over northern and northeastern China, out over the Yellow Sea, the, ja uh, the Sea of Japan, and across Japan itself. So let's have a look and see what the current... Uh, extremes have been across the the world in in the last seven days looking at the usual accounts that i often refer to starting off with thierry goose based in uh, vancouver canada first shot of arctic air into quebec temperatures into the minus 20s here as you can see uh, very cold conditions as explained already in inner mongolia so that's far northern china temperatures into the first minus 40s of the year so far here we've also seen a powerful storm uh, of record breaking levels dangerous winds uh, across parts of a uh, northern portions of canada i believe the first minus 40s of the year now in eureka nunavut territory far northern canada record breaking warmth according to uh, extreme temperatures around the world in south um, uh, africa here so uh, yeah let's have a skip through and see what we're seeing so very cold conditions across northwestern northwest and portions of China, uh, Canada, sorry, not China. Brazil may have recorded its highest temperature ever with a temperature of 44.8 Celsius recorded by an AWS. So we'll wait and see if that is confirmed. 
plenty going on keep it right here on my channel lots to talk about this upcoming week like share and subscribe to the channel bye for now